the centre of the global art world. Since last October, it's been at the centre of something else, the Occupy movement. Whether the protests leave a lasting impact on America's politics, what's for certain is they're already impacting on its art and culture. So the bat signal is really simple. It's just 99%, you know, black font in a white circle. You know, it's, so it's it's big and it, it reads, you know, as a as a bat signal. It's like you know, culturally legible. You know, the bat signal is a call for a call to arms and a call for aid. Yeah. You know, it's both of these things and a call for aid. You know, instead of a superhero, millionaire, you know, psychopathic millionaire Bruce Wayne. It's, you know, ourselves. It's the 99% coming to save itself. It's up to us. We are our own superhero, which is like, that's the part of it that I really think is rich. Yeah, this is good. All right. <laughs> Meet the Illuminators. Big and bright. Mission to project slogans onto buildings building. from a van. With these tools, in a matter of months, like they've created a brand YouTube. more successful than many actual brands. But is it performance art or is it activism? For the generation of artists around Occupy, that's a stupid question. It's been interesting. A lot of the work that's coming out of, out of this movement is not concerned with how it will be perceived by a buying public, you know? It's not really designed to be bought. No, it's designed to be shared. It's designed to be um, made available as widely as possible. It's, it's super copy left, you know, people are putting out their work. Uh, can I show you a poster? Yeah. All right. In the Occupy movement, the poster is where the white-walled gallery meets the black block, where fine art meets street art. I started out just doing graphics. I drew this picture of an octopus that said fight the vampire squid on its belly and I put it online and, you know, people used it as protest signs all around the country. Molly Crabapple is part of a generation of young artists who've started producing work with and about the Occupy movement. I think what Occupy did to my generation was it took us outside of ourselves, outside of the gallery system, outside of this very arid, self-referential way of working, and it made us engage with real people and engage with the outside world. You know, with my work for Occupy, I'm not just producing a cool, pretty image that decorates things. I'm producing a functional, a functional and persuasive piece of work that's going to be, you know, we pasted on buildings and held up by demonstrators. This looks like the paintings depicting the evils of capitalism will sell for serious dollars, but she's raised the money to paint them through crowdsourcing donations on the internet. So for $500, you might get a sketch. I thought that creating work that could only be bought by really rich people was silly and not in line with what I wanted to do. So I started thinking of how I could take something like this and break up the components of it so that people who maybe weren't, who weren't that wealthy could participate in it. Mike check! Mike check! Realizing that it is our weakness. For an older generation of more established artists, Occupy has been an excuse to get out of the galleries and back to the streets. Don't shoot! You have the whole line of them down on top of us. If the horses don't come in a minute, this might look in. like an amateur dramatic run through of Brecht's play about the Paris Commune, but it is, in fact, part of a bigger artistic installation. All you get with tears and bellyache. At first, I just drew like documentary drawings, and I would just observe, and I began to think about the time when drawing was socially relevant, when people really did documentary drawing. I was thinking about these, these ideas about a utopian society abstractly, and then all of a sudden I'm like, my God, it's just happening like a few blocks from my house. I better get down there. Zoe Beloff's been exhibiting at the experimental end of the art world for years. To make this work, she's recruited the actual Occupy protesters who, banned from camping out, now occupy the pavements of Manhattan in a kind of rehearsal for what many hope will happen next. And, by night, some of the same people are on the streets of New York for real. The park is closed. Please turn around and exit the park, please. 
Since they were expelled from the original camp, the occupiers have been playing cat and mouse with the NYPD nightly, and there's always an element of performance in the protest. Keep the earth safe! Who do you protect? Who do you serve? One percent. As the real police move in, so do actors playing a spoof police force. You don't have any money to pay us. And so, night after night, they turn New York into a venue for the culture war. Anytime you find a mass audience, you'll see the so-called world of art, the art world of critics and so on and so forth, uh, pay attention. In that sense, I think it, it does shift the art world, it does shift the culture, um, just through the fact that it's, um, it's part of a mass movement. I mean, there really is a global uprising for democracy, and these artists, um, uh, you know, we are, you know, working to try and, and, and champion that movement, really. Of course, today's artistic rebel is tomorrow's guy in the academy, but at least with this lot, you can't call them rebels without a cause. 